Welcome to my stamp collection. Several years ago I did a series about my coin collection and it really got a lot of good feedback. People were quite interested in it and I figured if I did one for the coin collection, I'll do one for my stamp collection because I think this is a very interesting hobby, something that I want to talk about. I've been collecting stamps for years and I just think it's a very interesting hobby compare and contrast with coins I think actually it offers more variety it offers more diversification it's easier to get into it's cheaper to get started there's more variety coins are in circulation they're used over and over again so stamps are issued a lot more they have many different denominations so it's a different type of hobby of course stamps also have color a lot of different denominations, a lot of different issues depicting people, places, commemorations, bicentennials, centennials. It's just a very, very interesting hobby and it reflects the history, which is also interesting about what's happening during the time of the stamp being issued. So it's like going through a history book. It's just a fascinating hobby. So I'm going to get started right now. This is a stamp album for U.S. stamps issued by Scott. Scott is a very well-known company that actually issues stamps by catalog number so when a US stamp is issued it has a Scott catalog number now this album was issued by Scott okay so let's get started here now this is the oldest stamp that I have in my US stamp collection so many of the very first postal stamps issued in the US depicted the Founding Fathers and Presidents, as you can see, I have two of them right here. So this is the first postage stamp that I have as far as the earliest date. As you can see, no perforations on the side. As you can see, even later on, during the Civil War, they still issued stamps for presidents, founding fathers. Here's another one of George Washington. Here's another one. As you can see, they look similar. That's the thing about the earlier, the earlier stamps. Many of them were similar in issuance. So the way to tell some of them different is because of the perforations. So you have to measure the perforations on the stamps. And also they have watermarks. So even though they look the same, they're not the same because the perforations were different. That's how you can tell the dates. And some of them have watermarks as well. So this is a perforation gauge. So you just place the stamp on the perforation and match it up and that's how you can tell when the stamp was issued. Okay, so let's move on. These are quite beautiful. I just love that color. It's back in the 1870s. Just a beautiful design. It looks similar to the way they designed the currency, dollars and things like that. It just has a lot of very nice design to it. Again, most of the depictions are from the Founding Fathers and U.S. Presidents. These stamps were still issued in the 1800s, late 1800s, as you can see. They're starting to change in design. But again, for the most part, mostly presidents and founding fathers. So here's where they really start to change. They become more horizontal. And these are commemorating events. I 
I just love the coloring on these stamps. So here they're going back to other issues, as you can see, they're watermarked. So that makes them different, similar issues to before. That's a very attractive stamp. Look at all the detail that they put into that, the design. Very nice. even give you a background about the historical event that took place and what the stamp is depicting so it's just like a history book just looking at these stamps the things that they're talking about and the events that they're commemorating is an interesting one the founding of the Jamestown colony Some stamps only have perforations on the top and bottom, which means that they were stamps that were in a roll. 
so they have no perforations on the sides as opposed to stamps that have perforations on all sides which indicates that they came from a sheet As you can see, the stamp is depicting the triumph of World War I. So these stamps tell a history as they're happening. That's a very attractive stamp. Picking the Mayflower. Very attractive stamp. I love the coloring and the design of this particular issue. Very nice. Showing the ship in between and the waves of the water on top. Very nice design. Lexington and Concord issue. Beginning of the Revolutionary War. Very nice. So getting back to what I was saying before. As you can see, stamps are one of the most versatile and have so much variety assortment and depict all kinds of different types of events, people, places, things, commemorations that coins just don't do and of course have all the beautiful colors of a collection that coins don't have. So it's just a great hobby to get started. Also less barrier of entry due to the cost. It's a very cheap way to start. You can start with pennies on the dollar. Generally you can order stamps on approval and you can start out with very little money and you can start getting a lot of stamps. So it's just a very interesting hobby. Also easier to display than coins. Coins of course can have albums but it's more difficult. They're heavier and stamp albums are very easy to set up. And a great way to look through them. It's really like looking at a history book of actual artifacts of history these stamps just taking place, being issued during the time of a historical event.
another thing you get with stamps as opposed to other collectibles they have all different sizes these are small and then they get bigger This is a popular collection called the Washington Bicentennial Issue. I have a complete collection of these stamps right here. As you can see, stamps have a storyline behind them also makes it very interesting. As you can see as we move forward, the stamps have more variety, they depict more events, commemorations, types of people, places and things. This is a beautiful set right here showing the national parks. And this is back in 1934. You see they're showing Old Faithful right here. That's a really nice stamp. It goes from vertical to horizontal showing the different landscapes of the parks that they're illustrating. This is a beautiful collection. Very, very nice. These are large stamps. Showing a lot of detail. So I have a complete collection of these. This is the first souvenir sheet that I have of the earliest date. As you can see, it's just a sheet of four stamps. Really nice.
Here's a really nice set. Army commemorative issue. This is a really, really nice souvenir sheet. I love the coloring, the way it's designed. As you can see, this is also very interesting. This depicts the territories of the U.S. So these were in states at the time. So these stamps were depicting the territories of places that were in states at the time. Alaska became a state way after the stamp was issued back in 1937 Puerto Rico is not a state it's a territory but it's showing the territory right here and here you have the Virgin Islands which is also not a state and a territory so it's a really nice set also so again depicting history That's a very nice stamp. Nice coloring. Very interesting issue. This is about the New York World Fair, 1939, right before the outbreak of World War II. And as you can see, this is really interesting. These were the first stamps reflecting the outbreak of World War II. As you can see, it shows for defense. So these stamps were issued in connection 
for the first time, coinciding with the outbreak of a war. This is a nice set depicting famous American authors. Poets, educators, 